you kindly stay a while, friend? Because we finally have confirmation that Bioshock 4 does exist. On the 9th of December, 2K confirmed that at long last, Bioshock 4 is being worked on. It's being developed by Cloud Chamber, who has some staff who come from the closed 2K Marin studio. Way back in 2014, 2K mentioned that 2K Marin were the ones working on the future of the Bioshock franchise. So, it sounds like some of the Cloud Chamber team already have about five years of experience working on the next Bioshock game. Specifically, in the statement, Cloud Chamber said that they are a deeply experienced group of game makers, including many responsible for Bioshock's principal creation, advancement and long-standing notoriety, and are honoured to be part of the 2K family as stewards of this iconic franchise. Apart from that statement, there's not been any official clues about what the next Bioshock game will be about, where it'll be set, or whether it's a direct sequel to Infinite or something completely new. There are apparent leaks circulating online, imagine me using heavy air quotes there, but they can't be verified, so they could just be pure fiction. One thing is for sure, Bioshock 4 has been in development since at least 2014, as in a Kotaku article, it was revealed to be using the code name Parkside. But just because it's been in development for roughly five years doesn't mean that it's anywhere near finished. 2K says in its statement that it's going to be several years until the next Bioshock game sees the light of day, so it'll almost definitely come out on next-gen consoles like the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. As that is certainly a very long time away, I've come up with a broad wish list of what we'd like to see in the next Bioshock game. So sit back, splice up, metaphorically speaking, please don't stick anything into your veins. And here's nine things we want to see in Bioshock 3. Or Bioshock 4. Or whatever it ends up being called. I'm going to get the obvious one out of the way right now. We want new plasmids. As well as the classic shock plasmid and the awesome murder of crows, Bioshock Infinite gave us more inventive plasmids that manipulated how enemies behaved, like Bucking Bronco, which levitated them into the air, or Undertow, which makes enemies in front of you topple over. Vigor combos also became a thing in Bioshock Infinite, where you could combine two plasmids like Bucking Bronco and Devil's Kiss to make levitated enemies explode with firebombs. So the next Bioshock game could, and should, include plasmid combos and will hopefully take it one step further, perhaps by letting you alter your plasmids, kind of like customising a gun. Change the damage type, how it behaves, the effect it has, that kind of thing. As with every Bioshock, what is an absolute must is a warped historical setting. You know what I mean. A period of time with a trademark unmistakable style that's been twisted by the discovery and widespread use of plasmids. Infinite had Columbia's stylized plasmid adverts, modern music sung by a barbershop quartet, and, oh yeah, it was a floating city. Then, Bioshock 1 and 2 were, obviously, set in the Art Deco-ish 40s underwater city, where so much of it looked oddly familiar, like the design of the apartments or the neon signs in Siren Alley, but as well as more ads for plasmids, there was an exaggerated decadence in places like Fort Frolic and Arcadia. The next Bioshock will doubtless have a similarly unnerving setting. With the Victorians and the 40s era ticked off, Cloud Chamber still has a bunch of time periods to visit. The leak I mentioned before talks about London in the 70s possibly being the setting of Bioshock 4, which sounds plausible, if maybe a little bit too modern for Bioshock. Maybe I'm just too used to the idea of Bioshock being 1950s or before, though. Bioshock 1 and 2 had big daddies, Bioshock Infinite has Songbird, so Bioshock 4 needs to have a deadly creature. And, by creature, 
I mean human grafted into a horrific suit of armour, of course. But it's not enough for it simply to scare us, or for it even to be a protector of some kind. Both Big Daddies and Songbird had a tragic story behind their creation. Big Daddies were made out of deep sea divers from the outside world who rapture scientists kidnapped, and the Songbird was made out of a combination of different beasts and some DNA from a hair sample. Whatever the creature in Bioshock 4 ends up being, feeling sorry for something so deadly because it was created in a lab or just has these tormented fragments of humanity, is part of what makes Bioshock so… well, Bioshock. A DLC as good as or better than Burial at Sea is also a must. Although Burial at Sea does fiddle around with the timelines quite a bit, and makes your brain do somersaults to try and figure out where it stands relative to the events of Infinite and the first Bioshock, it was still pretty good. Minerva's Den was pretty damn good, so something that has a twist in it certainly wouldn't go amiss either. Future DLCs could do with being a bit longer than Burial at Sea to let the story and setting ripen more, though. Splicers are part of Bioshock's fundamental DNA, and I love them. Twisted, messed up people who got a little too fond of plasmids, splicers make for horrific enemies, but, like Big Daddies, I still feel a bit sorry for them. It would be awesome if part of Bioshock 4's story showed what it's like to descend from an upstanding citizen into being a splicer, and what made you slide into addiction. Hell, Perhaps there could even be a section where you play a splicer, like in Bioshock 2 where you got to step into the tiny shoes of a little sister. Failed Utopia is a continuing theme in Bioshock. Rapture was supposed to be a capitalist dream, but devolved into a faction war between Fontaine and Ryan, with plasmid addicted splicers on the front lines and average citizens committing suicide to escape the terror. Columbia was an idyllic Victorian city at first glance, where everything looked neat and tidy, but it actually revelled in racism, xenophobia, the exploitation of workers, and eventually descended into revolution. Bioshock 4 might skip the whole pretense of a utopia even existing and instead lean into plasmid fueled lawlessness. That shot of a woman sweeping the porch of a burned building always stuck with me. What if an entire city that's fallen into disrepair was in denial about what's happening and the splices in the street, with you being the only sane one? Now, that sounds like Bioshock. A job listing for a position at Cloud Chamber that could be about Bioshock 4 mentions that Cloud Chamber want to build a post-narrative set of systems, quests and player progression that gives our fanatic fangirls and fanboys more content to experience on an ongoing live services basis. I'm not sure if a live service is something people would actually want for Bioshock, but then again, Assassin's Creed Odyssey proved a live service model can kind of work for RPGs. Updates add new quests and higher tiers for upgrading things like your ship, so if Bioshock 4 were to become a live service, it might work in a similar way. Bioshock games are dense with lore. Propaganda posters litter the walls, corpses are scattered throughout the cities and hint to what happened in their last moments, and audio diaries give you insight into people from every walk of life, whether that's a housewife, a groundbreaking scientist, or a worker who's down on his luck. Bioshock 4 absolutely needs to have the same narrative-heavy background to your adventures. It could even have a character from the other games briefly return in a cameo. The supposed leak mentions Eleanor Lamb, but something Barely even more subtle fire. would do the trick. Perhaps a newspaper is. snippet about the missing Mark real. Meltzer, or a long-forgotten poster advertising Ryan this Industries that you'd find somewhere in a back fire. alley. Lastly, with Bioshock games having incredibly immersive environments, I really would not say no to the ability to equip different outfits. Instead of just mixing up how your weapons and plasmids work with gene tonics, how about Bioshock 4 also having bits of clothing you can deck yourself out in? 
Wearing a masquerade mask could prevent splicers from immediately attacking you, kind of like Majora's Mask in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Or donning a security guard uniform might make security bots and cameras ignore you. Or simply dressing up like a soldier could give you some damage reduction. So that's what we would like to see in Bioshock 4. If you enjoyed the video, then would you kindly let us know by hitting the like button. As soon as Bioshock 4 gets announced, you can bet your bottom dollar, even that one you pulled from a splicer's bloody pocket, that I'll be diving deep into it. So subscribe to Eurogamer for more videos about Bioshock 4. New ones appear on our channel every day, so you won't be waiting long. Until Bioshock 4 gets announced, just you remember, we all make choices, but in the end, our choices make us.